In this video, the three countries in Latin America where you can naturalize as a citizen in only two years. This is something that's very unique to Latin America, that this region is very open to tourism. And the ability to gain a second citizenship, a second nationality and passport after only two years of residence is literally unheard of in Europe, in North America, in Asia, basically any other region uh, doesn't have this. Two years is the fastest anywhere in the world. Uh, and and specifically, specifically, we're referring to cases where it's not via marriage, it's not via a child being born or any special circumstance like that. We're talking the simplest form of naturalization, which is that you put in the requisite number of years of residency on the ground. And at the end of those X years of residency, you get to ask for citizenship. In the US, it's, I don't know, five years. In Canada, I think it's three years of permanent residency. But these two countries in Latin, these three countries in Latin America, you can naturalize in only two years. So without further ado, what are those three countries? In alphabetical order, they are Argentina, Dominican Republic, and Peru. And it's literally in the constitution, it's in the laws of these countries that if you put in the time, if you put in the two years, at the end of the two years, you can start your citizenship process. Typically, you're gonna get recognized as citizenship before you get the passport. A lot of people think two years to passport, but you gotta understand there's kind of like a couple steps where you know, you're gonna have to get recognized as a citizen, and then once you're recognized as a citizen, you probably get a citizenship certificate, and then once you have that certificate, then you can ask for the passport. So you don't go straight to ordering <laughs> this passport from a new country, you kinda get recognized as a citizen first. And since we're talking about naturalization, just to give you guys um, a bit more background before we jump into the specifics of every country, in this traditional sense of naturalization, you're going to have to do a history test on the history of the country in almost any case or almost any naturalization. They kind of have these common themes where you're going to have to do a history test. You're probably going to need to know the national anthem. In addition to the history test, uh, there's probably also going to be a Spanish or a language test, right? So you're going to have to know Spanish for Argentina, Dominican, and uh, Peruvian citizenship. And, you know, they, they basically just want to see that you have ties to the country and that you're really in it for the long haul. So with the expectation that there, you know, you are going to have to speak Spanish, you are going to have to have some ties. These are the three countries, Argentina, Dominican, and Peru. So Argentina, starting on Argentina, they have enshrined in their constitution that with two years of presence on Argentine soil, you can become Argentine. Now, Argentina is a unique case because technically by the letter of the law, you do not need to be a resident during those two years. You just need to be physically present during those two years. But in reality, being a resident for those two years is going to make your case a whole lot easier. And it's actually going to be a slightly different and easier process if you've been a resident for those two years. If you have not been a resident and you've basically been on tourist visas overstaying and then you try to apply for citizenship, has that historically worked in the past? Yes, a little bit. Uh, our expectation is that's going to get harder in the future because there's just more court cases gumming up the system now in 2024. You have all these Russians, you have people from all over the world that have kind of figured this out. And it's gonna to have to be like a court case where there's a lawyer and a judicial process and all this type of stuff. And you can kind of avoid that by just already being a resident and there's gonna be a lot less friction in your application. But with that being said, spend two years in Argentina and you can become an Argentine citizen. Now, the next country on our list is the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican, you definitely need to be a resident in order to apply for citizenship. There are a number of ways of obtaining residency, 
The most common are the investor visa and the rentista and pensionado visas. Basically, if you have passive income, then you can get the rentista or pensionado visa. Or if you invest somewhere to the tune of $200,000 US into the Dominican, then you can obtain an investor visa and apply for citizenship that way. Now, you may have heard of, if you're deep in the game, you may have heard of a six month path to citizenship in the Dominican Republic. Our understanding is this fast track path does in fact exist. We've had you know, different lawyers promise us that it does exist. We haven't actually seen anyone go through it, haven't gone super hard in terms of trying to really find um, anecdotes and, and people's experiences. So the six month thing said to work, we're not 100% sure, said to work. In any case, it's either going to be six months or it's going to be two years. Two, mo- two years is still very generous and very reasonable to become a citizen of the Dominican Republic. And so you just need to obtain that visa. Physical presence during that two years is up for a debate how much time you actually need to spend in the Dominican during those two years. Our sense of it is it seems like you don't need to be there more than six months a year, which is huge. Um, But obviously, if you were there more than six months per year for those two years, then that would, you know, have a that would create a stronger case and improve your likelihood of getting citizenship in two years. But you've kind of heard through the grapevine that they can still probably push it through if you've been there less than six months, especially if you're investing a lot in the country. And it's sort of a mosaic picture where it's like, okay, like, if you if you're using the right lawyers, if you're using the right people, if you've done the right things, made investments, maybe hired people, maybe you have real estate, it's going to help your application overall. And that, that kind of goes for everywhere in Latin America, right? Is and every citizenship application is do everything you can to strengthen your application through ties to the country. Now the third country in our list is Peru. Peru is also two years to citizenship, which is amazing. Peru is a country where it's actually very easy as well to get residency. It could be as simple as um, signing up for a school and taking Spanish lessons at a local university, or you can start a business, or you can do the rentista visa. So lots of different options. We've helped people typically do the the start a business route, and, and we know that that works. But Peru residency, definitely quite achievable, and if you're willing, to sacrifice if you're willing to spend two years in Peru, spending the majority of the year in Peru, six plus months a year in Peru, then at the end of the two years, you can apply for Peruvian citizenship. And our understanding is that Peru is generally pretty good about issuing the passport and issuing the citizenship once you're eligible. Obviously, there's gonna be a little bit of bureaucracy Peru is maybe middle of the pack in bureaucracy. It's not horrible, but it's not super blazingly efficient either. Um, But they do, you know, people do come out of it getting Peruvian citizenship. And we've seen lots of anecdotes of this. And, um, you know, there's probably worse places to spend two years. You can go to the south. You can go to Arequipa, tons of sun. You can go up to, I don't know, uh, Mancora in the north and, and go surfing spend time in Lima, spend time in Cusco. It's a big country. There's a lot to discover. Honestly, with two years, you won't even have time to visit everything in Peru. There's so much to do there. It's such a big country with so many different uh, geographies and, and things to do. The Amazon, the mountains, the beach, all that good stuff. So Peru, honestly, you know, I think a lot, a lot of people, I think it's a valid option for people as well. So those are the three options in Latin America where you can get citizenship in only two years of residency. Again, these countries are Argentina, Dominican, and Peru. Each country is going to have um, some nuances and some hiccups and different aspects of the process, maybe ways that obviously the two years could look different in Argentina versus the Dominican and Peru. So whichever country, um, you know, just learn the the small details and we can help you with that, of course. But just know that if you spend, you know, at least six months of the year for two years in these countries, then you have a very strong shot at becoming a citizen. And six months in reality, that is that even two years? Because it's two years of residency, 
but you're only spending 12 months physically in the country at a minimum. Obviously, really, it's like 13, 14 months at a minimum. But so it's not even really a full two years in the country. A lot of people ask about what's up with uh, tax as well and does this make me a tax resident, yada, yada. That's not uh, within the realm of this video, but uh, long story short, of the three countries we're talking about, Dominican Republic is the most tax friendly. So if you wanted a tax friendly path to citizenship in two years, I would choose the Dominican over Argentina and Peru, of course. But yeah, let's just, you know, take a step back and appreciate this. Like if you had, say, six years on your hands, you could go spend two years in Argentina, become a citizen, then go spend two years in Dominican, become a citizen, then go spend two years in Peru and become a citizen. Obviously, you can switch up the order if you want to do a different order there. But with just six years of time spent invested in this global citizen strategy, you would have three new passports. A lot of people go live somewhere for six years and they get the passport or maybe they don't even get the passport of that country where they go live for six years. But imagine you dedicate six years to this process and you get three different citizenships. And actually, if you overlap them a little bit, like you kind of held those residencies concurrently, you could probably shorten that timeline to five years, give or take, in terms of becoming eligible for the citizenship. We haven't talked about how long does it take to actually get that passport in your hands after becoming eligible? Um, that's a whole conversation in and of itself, but I would probably estimate that it's going to take another year to put it in your hands where you don't need to be in that country anymore putting in your time, but you'll probably have to pop in at some point to take an exam or sign some papers or uh, go to an office to, to pick something up, that kind of thing. Even with power of attorneys, sometimes things are unavoidable. So two years to qualify and then maybe a year of paperwork and bureaucracy before that passport is in your hands. But with proper planning, these passports can definitely be yours. It's definitely achievable. And we wish you best of luck on your Latin life second passport adventure. Please, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, thumbs up, comment. We're going to be dropping much more videos like this in the future, educating you on different opportunities in Latin America. Ciao for now.